Okay, in this episode, I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite records of all time, uh, something that was quite formative uh, in my guitar playing, singing, singer-songwriter upbringing. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to explore what the heck's going on with Twitter. Um, Elon just turned it into Twitter, rather it's called X, x.com. Curious to see what, what happens there. Uh, and then we're introducing a new segment, the conspiracy segment on Antarctica. What's going on at the South Pole? And then finally, I'm going to riff on martyrdom, on resilience slash martyrdom. It's something I've thought a great deal about in my faith. But first, this is one of my favorite records of all time. This is uh, Fionn Reagan. I'm not exactly sure what uh, country he's from. He's from Europe. Singer, songwriter, kind of a little, you know, crazy, but as far as sonically, this is the most basic album. It's him and like a, an acoustic guitar. I guess there's a couple other instruments at certain points he played, you know. But really good songwriting. What's interesting about him, a lot of his songs were uh, written from stream of consciousness, so they weren't necessarily... They weren't so much, like really, I don't know, I wouldn't say thought out, not thought out, but they were more so just kind of strange uh, as far as um, just whatever came to his mind is kind of how the lyrics developed. So not, you know, they don't necessarily make a ton of sense, um, but a really good finger picker, uh, good folk stuff. And when I was first starting out, folk, folk music was my favorite genre. This is his first record, and, and funny enough, I'm surprised I even got this because I'm pretty sure this is out of print. I got this a couple years ago, and uh, smaller, 12 songs. Uh, I'm going to play one of the songs right now, actually. One's called Be Good or Be Gone. And I've been playing it for years, so if you know me, you've, you've, you've heard me play it probably. Uh, here he goes. Uh... If you happen to read this, Rose was born, child actress. The fifth day of the snow Be good or be gone Be good or be Be gone The range was staggering Movement and timing Frame by a frame It did unfold Be good or be gone Be good or be Be gone I read to you on Saturdays Museum has closed down Sell all your things At the end of the drive Be good or be gone Be good or be be gone I have become an aerial view of a coastal town 
that you once knew Be good or be gone Be good or be, be gone First take, we did it. All right. Uh, any announcements? Yes, this, actually tomorrow, if you're in the local area, come by um, Santa Fe. We're doing the uh, contemporary Hispanic market, the Spanish market, and uh, me and my dad, my family, a bunch of us will be there hanging out. Should be a big, big event. We're selling new jewelry. So if you're interested in uh, the stuff I've been working for the past like two weeks on like tons of jewelry, I'm hoping I can get it all done in time. Um, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it. Right? I think so. Okay, let's start the show. course how you doing i'm doing just fine how are you doing chad i'm doing good uh like i said i'm just getting ready for this market dude i'm, I'm here wearing a jacket in a really hot room for no reason other than to separate this uh show visually from other shows yeah you gotta look cool you know what i mean like no one's gonna listen to you if you don't look right you know what's funny is i went to uh american apparel i used to go visit all the american apparels because uh, it was never one here locally so when I go to like, I think we were in Phoenix or no, we were in Tucson and there was a girl, uh, my buddy was wanting to buy me a jacket. He's like asking the, uh, the lady behind the counter, which one, one was more, one was a cardigan. So had utility. And the other one was like, if you remember American apparel, they were all, um, mostly fashion forward stuff. It wasn't necessarily like card hard or something utility. But it, it, this other one was like a fleece jacket. It wasn't even like a windbreaker. It was a purposeless jacket. It just looked cool. And she said, fashion over function. She chose the, the one that didn't have utility. I always remembered that. And it always stuck with me. Now I'm just like, it's fashion over function, guys. I'm going to be here sweating for no reason. It's all for you. It's not for no reason. It's for our, our, our it, viewers it is. on YouTube. What a sacrifice. You guys, I hope you can appreciate. Okay? Yeah, so if you're, if you're merely listening to this episode... Uh, in the sweltering Albuquerque heat, you have to come over to YouTube and watch Chad do it for you. I'm going to sweat here for you guys, so I hope you guys um, see the, the, the lengths I'm willing to go for you, okay? All right, we're going to do some news quick hits. Let's just jump right in. This is just, this first one is, it just came across Twitter uh, as I was doing the show notes. Hopefully it's nothing significant, but a guy caught like some sort of d uh, COVID-like disease. And uh, it might be uh, bad. Let's see, what does it say? A man has tested positive for a potentially fatal coronavirus called Mar MERS Cove, COV, in the city of Abu Dhabi, World Health Organization says. Don't know how much I trust them. Did you see this? Have you, have you, did this come across in your feeds? No, this is, this is a bummer. <laughs> I, I didn't come across this well what's funny is like you know since covid everybody's been super you know afraid or like on edge so like if something else comes up it's there's an immediate freak out hopefully it's nothing obviously um monkey pox or whatever you're not supposed to say monkey pox anymore right what do they even call that m pox or yeah it's like m pox now it's the approved the approved phrase Jeez, man everything who recommends surveillance in both humans and animals i guess it it can be either Huh, that's interesting. Saw that. Hopefully by the time this airs, we're not all dying. The next one was, um, oh, I came across this. Um, this is old. This is from like November, but I, I wanted to pull it up. How many media hoaxes did you fall for on this list? Russia collusion. Actually, this would be fun. Just comment, please. Uh, it would help us in the algorithms as well. 
get the show moving, but um, comment how many, we're going to read through all of these and do like a check or something, how many you actually fall for. No shame. You know, Russian collusion. I didn't fall for that one. Dude, that's, that's one I'd like to go down as far as a conspiracy rabbit hole one day. Seth, actually, I don't even know if you could say his name. Seth Rich. Um, that's why I didn't fall for it. The next one was Trump called neo-Nazis fine people. Also false. Um, did not fall for Did you fall for that? For the calling uh, fine people, the fine people quote? It was from the Charlottesville riot. No, because I watched the clip like live. The full clip, and right? It, and like the yeah. you know half a second preceding and following that exactly. clip totally adds all the clarity you need. What about Jesse Smollett? Uh, no, that just seemed like... Like really, I think he claimed it happened in Chicago. That's the this is MAGA country guy, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. There's just no way. It's like yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I fell for that one. I think it's because I think I caught on to that one a little late. By the time people were already super suspicious. Sure enough, Bubba Wallace garage pull. That one died real quick. I don't know what that is. What is that one? I, th- I believe that was um, the FBI or somebody had reported a a noose. But it wasn't a noose. It was, oh my gosh. It was just a rope that. hanging from a garage door <laughs> to pull it down. Um, the Covington kids. Oh, yeah. The one where he was um, accused of being too aggressive because he just looked and smiled at, at the uh, protesting uh, Native American slash whatever oh they were. Oh, my gosh. Um, Governor Whitmer kidnapping plot. Nope. That was a fed op for sure. Um, Kavanaugh grape. Didn't fall for that. Uh, Trump, yeah, that one, he had like he had so many character witnesses from back then, it was ridiculous. Yeah. The Trump uh, tape did not fall for that. That was another part of the Russia collusion thing. The dossier. The COVID uh, lab leak was a conspiracy theory. You know, I definitely... How soon did you get onto that one? That it was, that it was a lab leak and it wasn't like eating yeah. bats or whatever? Yeah, they said it was... They immediately said that that's not it. It was from the wet market or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt like there was so much that you couldn't think at that time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if that was the issue. I didn't know if uh, th- even calling it the China virus was the problem, like the reason you couldn't bring up that it was a Chinese lab. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, are we trying to get three steps removed from the truth? That one was just super weird to me. The reason I didn't think the lab leak theory was, I saw a Twitter thing at the time, and um, this can take forever to go through this list, but real quick. Um, and uh, China was building a bunch of these hospitals like really, really fast. This was, I think, at the end of 2019 slash early, like January 2020. I remember that. And a lot of this stuff was getting banned. In fact, Zero Hedge published that theory, and they got banned from Twitter. This was before Elon. And um, so they weren't allowed to say any of this stuff. And so I was onto that real early, like, oh, what's going on here? And then obviously they get out there and say, oh, no, it's from the wet market, wet market. And so all these people... Yeah. No, that one, that one didn't get me. I, this is going to sound super arrogant as I go through these. I don't know. I haven't gone through them all, honestly. Bo- border agents whipped migrants. That was rough. That was so obviously false. You remember that? That was that picture that went around with like, yeah, they were on their horses. I do remember that. It was like, what are we in like 1835? Jeez. It was bizarre. Trump saved nuclear secrets at Mar-a-Lago. No, but he did have top secret documents or something, right? That's the deal that he's going through right now. It was obviously more secure at Mar-a-Lago than it would have been anywhere in D.C. anyway. The Steele dossier, that's linked to the P-tapes, I believe. The Russian bounties on U.S. soldiers, that was going on through 2020. They kept saying, um, man, it's crazy how much Western media goes after Russia. And it's almost always false. Like, what is with the tying to Russia constantly with Trump and all this stuff? It's like they've got, they've got it out for Russia, for sure. They had it out for Trump. They had it out for everybody. Yeah, I think it was like That's the initial dissident. like marrying of the idea of the Russian government and Trump. Mm-hmm. And then what follows is then villainizing Russia and then Trump. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, yep. Trump said drinking bleach would fight COVID. I watched that one live. Hey, which it does, but it tastes like crap, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you're still with us, brother. You know, you definitely fell for that one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, that was obviously wrong. He, I think he, live he had asked, like, is it possible to shine light? Um, I don't think he ever said drinking bleach. I don't, it was so obvious. And then they went after that was when, like, media, dude, that was when media was going crazy. Like, all out full court press, not even trying to like have any integrity or, or 
semblance of honesty at that time. That was during the whole like ivermectin thing as well. Um, where am I? Muslim travel ban. Muslim travel ban. I think he actually did that. Or no. He did, he did do a Muslim travel ban. It was ban, certain countries. But it, it wasn't was, a It Muslim wasn't ethnic. Ban. Yeah, it was, you know, in Trump fashion, being very loose-lipped with what he was doing. Yeah. So that one's kind of a, a murky one. Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. Did not fall for that one. The, the, the uh, New York Post article, of course, was banned from Twitter, which we later found out they had backdoors to uh, intelligence agencies, three-letter agencies in the U.S. government. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, best COVID leadership. Funny. Who fell for that? Like, what, where's the fall for? Trump built cages for migrants' kids. That was under the Obama administration, at least the pictures. People still quote that one. Like, they try to own conservatives with that. Yeah. It's interesting going through all these because they're all individual, like, eras of, of battles, of psychological operation battles, you know what I mean? Totally. So we all have these, like, oh, where were you when this happened? Um, I'm going to try to just go through these here. Uh, austere religious skull. What is that? I don't know. Trump overfed koi fish in Japan. What? I did see that. I think it was like a, uh, okay, they, they were doing like a meet and greet with him and like the leader of Japan and their conversation like moved on from the koi pond. They were doing this like symbolic feeding of the fish and all we saw was Trump dump like a full bag of food in and then take <laughs> off like he, like he was bored. <laughs> But what we didn't see is like 10 seconds before that, the Japanese leadership did the same thing. Okay. So. Um, build Back Better will pay for itself. Yeah, that was, we saw the numbers. That wasn't going to add up. Thanks, Elizabeth Warren. Trump tax cuts benefiting only the rich. Cloth masks prevent COVID. If you get vaccinated, you won't catch COVID. It's a big one. Uh, SUV killed parade marchers. That was the Christmas parade. Jeez. That didn't happen at all? No, it did happen, but it, they, it wasn't an SUV. It was the guy that they tried to you know, hide his identity because oh, he was black. Right. And it might have been uh, it, racially it didn't motivated. Fit the right, yeah, it didn't fit the right, uh, right storyline. Exactly. Line. So they just tried to like, remove him from the story. Trump used tear gas to clear a crowd for a Bible photo. It wasn't for that, but they did do that. Don't say gay was in the bill. That was recent. Uh, Putin price hike. That was last year. Uh, ivermectin is a horse dewormer and not for humans. Mostly peaceful protests. Trump overpowered Secret Service for Wheel of the Beast. Wait. Oh, right. They said, oh, that, yeah. they said that he was like reaching for the steering wheel. The Beast is like the armored limo or whatever, yeah. right? There was the video that came out. It was a joke. Uh, Officer Sicknick was murdered by protesters. That didn't happen. I think he had a heart attack. Something happened. Uh, January 6th was an insurrection. All of these are like taboos. We're going to get flagged. Trump mocked a reporter's disability. BYU students hurled racist insults at Duke volleyball player. I think if you can actually listen to this episode within 30 minutes of our upload, uh, you should win something. Yeah. Because we're going to get scrubbed off the internet. This episode's for sure going to get scrubbed off the internet. Um, oh, and then lastly, as far as, there's not even a lot of news things here, but, um, I saw this one this week and I I had a chuckle. Mitt Romney, totally a normal guy, down to earth, you know, if... Well, as you all know, today is National Hot Dog Day, and uh, perhaps you also know that hot dog is my favorite meat. (laughs) I love hot dogs. Oh, no. Uh, I love them. In buns, I love them outside of buns. I love them with oh, no. this is not right. like hot dogs. It's the best, you know, best meat there is, without question. This could be so AI. All of you who like me are celebrating a National Hat Hot Dog Day. Uh, He's got congratulations a hot dog hat. to you, and may there be many, many more hot dogs served in our wonderful land. Whose idea was that? That was very weird. That's seriously. That's like that. It could be like put some horror music to that. That would be really kind of creepy. I think. Like that put, gives us Zuckerberg vibes with his barbecue. Do you remember for, that clip? Yep, yep, yep. I'm starting to think that some of these people are like AI. Like they're, they're, they're probably clones or not clones, but uh, I'm joking, guys. But um, cyborgs, AI, something. All right, first story, first main story. Elon transitions Twitter into X. I don't really know what this means. I actually haven't done a lot of investigation, but I found a thread and I thought we'd do it live. 
We'll do it live. So this is Kanakoa the Great. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, in 1999, Elon Musk co-founded X.com, aiming to revolutionize banking online. Good luck, brother. A merger with Confinity in 2000 paved the way for PayPal's emergence. So he actually kind of did do that. But um, Fast forward to 2022, Musk acquired Twitter for $44 billion, driving... Uh, driven by his mission to revive freedom of speech and the internet and fulfill X.com's original vision. In 2023, Twitter will merge into X.com, which it did today, where it's Monday, birthing the Everything app. That's interesting. This is where, this is where the debates are going to start right here. A visionary platform seamlessly blending banking, payments, social media, encrypted messages, voice calls, and video services worldwide. With Twitter's communication prowess and X.com's cutting-edge financial services, users will be able to switch effortlessly between social interactions and financial transactions, transforming how we manage money and connecting with others. What's interesting, I think it was Elijah Schaefer, he posted a tweet, he said something along the lines of, imagine um, Twitter integrating podcasts or live podcasts, live streams, and Super Chats, YouTube coin Super Chat, and um, they're paid chats. So if you want to get you know, elevated to the front of the screen or whatever, you pay five bucks. I believe YouTube takes 30%. Twitter could integrate this for monetization purposes, and at, you know, he's got payment processing um, potential. I think he could potentially revolutionize radio or modern radio, modern podcasting, live streaming. Could be pretty disruptive. I mean, Amazon's, I think, on Twitch, it's 30% as well, or maybe the 50%. I think it's probably 30%. 30% seems to be the industry standard. If he can do it and at a fraction um, and then integrate crypto, that would be pretty cool. Where it gets weird is then we're becoming like an all-in-one internet website, information, money, banking, you know. I don't know. It could be kind of an interesting thing. I do think that is his vision, right? So in that thread, he's got a video. Let's watch some of that video. <clears throat> it's, I guess, like Elon from when he first started as an entrepreneur. So this he's is an ATM. Child. What we're going to do is transform the traditional banking industry. Now, I do not fit the picture of a banker. X.com, this is Julie. Raising $50 million is a matter of making a series of phone calls. And the money is there. I've sunk the great majority of, of my net worth into X.com, which is the new banking and mutual funds company on the internet that I've started. Big, big X. Exactly. He X. looks X. like a child. I think X.com could absolutely be a, a multi-billion dollar bonanza. Because if you look at the industry bonanza. that X is pursuing, it's the biggest sector of the world economy. There's a lot, a lot of great things that are going to come out. Um, obviously, payments down the road, um, maybe later this year. Um, and uh, improving the uh, direct message stuff. At what um, net worth does voice inflection not matter anymore? And, <laughs> and, and video and, and he just calls. doesn't care. He does not. Uh, care. He's not entertaining and just anyone. Basically, solving like basically, we, we, if, if there's something you want to do, you can do it on this sort of you know X everything app, or you can leave easily and do it somewhere else. If, if, essentially, if, if if done right, the X would be. Would, would serve people's financial needs to such a degree that over time it would become, I don't know, maybe half of the global financial system. Wow. Or some big number. Could you uh, imagine? I'm not sure what the number is, but pretty big. Um, so it, it would be by far the biggest sort of financial I don't underestimate him. But, but like I said, not, not, not really in the way He's that got people limitless, are um, about, uh, banks. ambition. Just, um, just the most efficient database for the thing that is money. Um, like I said, like, you know, least amount of fraud, uh, everything's real time. Um, and if it involves money in any way, it can be dealt with. He's boring. Okay, one, that's enough. Location. Interesting. Um, go back to the thread. Is there anything else to juice from that? Dude, it's wild. Um, banking. That's a conspiracy lane I'm going to have to write down and go down through as well because 
anybody throughout history who wants to get involved in banking. And so it seems to be like a real like cutthroat business to get involved in. There's some serious um, power players that seem to be involved in that world. The thread basically goes on to just kind of recap what you just said now. Okay. It would take up a large chunk of the financial system and it would be a, this app would be an ecosystem for a text, video, picture, voice, kind of everything. Okay. All right. Well, that'll do that. Um, topic two, we're going to do this uh, conspiracy segment here. This will be fun. I believe somebody pointed me onto this, said they wanted to hear something about Antarctica. And honestly, I've not done too much research into it previous to today. Not too much, but I have come across it from time to time. It's integrated with uh, flat earth, you know, stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. UFOs, energy weapons. Um, so what we're going to start with, um, this video I came across, actually came across a couple of days ago on Instagram. These guys from Australia are driving a boat south and um, they get turned around. The turret's turning at us. Wait, we should hide Adrian and take A big like, ship oh, is starting to turn toward them as they're going south. Speeds up. Can you read that? Uh, this is a warship. You need to exit the area immediately. Yes, sir. I think it said it was a U.S. warship. So it is law. I believe international law. Just go. You cannot go south to a certain degree. And so, of course, that creates all of these theories. That's good for them. So they just have to turn back. But this creates a lot of theories when you think, you know, you forbid a topic, it just makes people more curious. And at the outset, I, I'm, not, I'm genuinely not a flat earther. Um, I believe that the earth is, still, in fact, I think you can get banned from YouTube for being flat earth or like spreading flat earth content. And, and when, I'm not saying that because of that. I genuinely am not a flat earther. Have I asked you about that before? We've probably talked about it in passing at some point. You are, right? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I'm just kidding. So I just I love to question like whatever the common understanding is, and yeah. I love to just perpetuate like any other idea. Yeah, especially when like you're just poking fun at like the authority, saying you can't do it. So there's this. Uh, this was recent. There's a whistleblower that came out. Uh, I don't remember his name, um, but he talks about. It and he seems so informed. Like he, he doesn't seem like a, a random kook. Like he seems kind of like. Now he's not talking about flat Earth. He's talking about um, weapons and wanting to inform the public about um, certain categories of of technology and weapons. I physically held a key that opened every single door in the facility. I had complete access to every compartment they manufactured. What are you blowing the whistle on? That there are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even consider that exist on this planet. Directed energy weapon systems is something that people need to get in their vocabulary fast. The Ice Cube Neutrino Detector is not simply a passive listening device as presented for the science that they're claiming it to do. It also has the capacity to transmit. There are embedded in the ice what are called digital optical modules, DOMs. They're about the size of a basketball. The array embedded in the ice is one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. It is the world's largest telescope. And now because we have proven that it can transmit, it's the world's largest directed energy weapons system. It is responsible for the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. I so... He's saying that there's a, what do they call it, DARPA, or some sort of like crazy energy weapons. D-A-A-R-P-A, -A -A, I believe is what DARPA stands for, but it has to do with um, that type of tech. It's a secret program within the U.S. government, allegedly. Um, so he's saying that they're manufacturing earthquakes with this technology. Is that, that they have the saying? potential to. I think what he said in New Zealand was an accident. He goes on, I did listen to the beginning of 
there's an, like an hour long um, interview on YouTube. This came out in, like a week ago. So that clip is from that interview uh, from Sean something podcast. And uh, yeah, he, he lays it out. He's like talking about all these obscure technologies and, and abbreviated words and, you know, seems believable. I don't know what to think about it. Uh, I definitely think, you know, I definitely think there's some tech going on, secret tech um, going on. But what's crazy is I don't know if it originates, but I've been hearing like it originated like in World War II era with like the Nazis going down there. Are you familiar with like Argentina? And yeah, uh, there are like uh, Argentinian towns that are pretty much generationally German, right? Yes. Because the people that fled from Germany. Yeah. And so I've vaguely done a little research on like World War II occult stuff, like wondering what, what, what did they, what were they doing? Because there was some weird stuff, specifically like Nephilim or like Fallen Angel stuff. I was like, is there some sort of like, what, what were they doing? What were they looking for? You could, you could find certain documentaries. There was actually, funny enough, it's on Hulu or it was on Hulu. It was um, finding, finding Hitler. Gosh, this is, all of these words are going to get flagged, dude. We're in so much trouble. Um, it's, 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 on, it's a mainstream documentary series on Hulu. It's called Finding Hitler, but it was talking about whether or not they believed, I think, I don't want to spoil it. I actually didn't watch all the episodes. I probably watched like two, three episodes. That he didn't die the way that uh, the you know narrative has been stated, and that he may have fled to Argentina. They're German-speaking towns. But what's funny is Argentina's, you know, very southern. It's like one of the southernmost con- uh, countries in the world. Um, and so a lot of there's a lot of like secrecy around World War II technology, specifically on the side of the Germans, and. There's this video right here, actually. I think it explains some of this. This is by Greg Rees. He's an InfoWars guy, Alex Jones, buddy. They create content together. So take it, you know, yeah, this is... What does the title say? During World War II, Whistleblower advanced claims advanced technology in Antarctica can cause earthquakes. Was known as Pause it real quick. The bell. I want to see what that is. Um... So yeah, so he's going to talk about, we'll cut it out in the, well, we can listen to some of the clip, but he's, he's talking about the same guy, the same whistleblower. And this is a recent video, I believe as well. Came out in the last couple of weeks. I'm um, sorry, play it. I just wanted to catch the beginning as well. Secret documents found years later reveal that the bell was a new kind of exotic energy technology that could affect time and defy gravity. In 1939, the Nazis set up a secret base in Antarctica known as New Schwabia. Starting in 1945, Operation Paperclip secretly brought hundreds of Nazi scientists to totally America, where they were hired by the military industrial complex. In 1946, Admiral Richard Byrd led a military expedition known as Operation High Jump to seek out Nazi base New Schwabia and other Antarctica bases. On his way back to the US, Admiral Byrd told Chilean newspaper El Mercurio that in the event of a new war, the US would be facing military craft that can fly from one pole to the other with incredible speed. So pause. In 19... Sounds like certain secret, top secret information. What do you think are behind UFOs? Me? Yeah. Do you think it's like? Um, I don't know if we have enough time. <laughs> well, do you think? Do you think that. it's uh, it's secret uh, human technology, or do you think it's like extraterrestrial? Both. I tend to think that it's spiritual. Um, and I like don't like interdimensional beings type of thing. Demonic for sure. Um, and however you classify that or clarify that, I I don't have a particular leaning. Uh, but I also don't make the delineation between like physical and spiritual. Like I think if there is a line between the physical and the spiritual realm, it is paper thin. Hmm. So people say, no, I've seen physical things or no, we have physical pieces of craft. It's like, well, I believe that, you know, so I used to, that's at least uh, an option. Yeah. I used to be of the persuasion of something along those lines where, you know, we Genesis six, uh, the Nephilim and fallen sons of man, uh, sons of God coming and taking wives, human wives and creating giants among men, that type of thing, and that UFOs were somehow tied in with that, which honestly, 
because you know that secret technology i actually think might have been derived from that knowledge secret esoteric knowledge that could be derived from that stuff so i i don't think they're necessarily disconnected however i think that that uh, what i'm starting to lean toward through this stuff is that there was um now whether or not i think i think it's i think it's man i think people are behind these like he just said it right i mean they can go from the south pole to the north pole real quick um is it so this guy actually talks about different techno technological things. So keep going, sorry, if, it's, if you still got it up. 59, a dozen nations like signed dark matter the Antarctic stuff, Treaty. The Black Making Sun, it it's weird stuff. for anyone to travel south of the 60th parallel without government permission. Since then, curious videos have circulated that show what appear to be Nazi UFOs. And just last Monday, Dr. Stephen Greer introduced Antarctica whistleblower Eric Hecker. In 2010, Same I was guy. selected to go down to the South Pole Station in Antarctica for an entire year by Raytheon Polar Services as an employee of a third-party contractor for the National Science Foundation. I function in a dual-role capacity as a tradesman and a firefighter. My responsibilities required me to be more informed than most of my crew and offered me complete access to the facilities. What I learned from like, this no unique way. experience needs to be shared with the entire world. The technology at the South Pole Station certainly can do what it is presented as its primary purposes, and unfortunately, much more. The Ice Cube Neutrino Detector is presented as a passive listening device for the purposes of the science as presented. But I'm going to okay, skip right to the chase, folks. Repeat some of the same things he said in the other clip. Definitely some weird stuff going on down there, trying to keep it secret. And so then it goes back into this like ice wall. I came across this other video. Some other theories of what's going on in Antarctica that's not necessarily UFO related. It's the it's the it's the more of the ice wall that there's like a hollow earth theory. I don't know if y'all have heard about this stuff. Um there's this next clip here. Same this same guy is Gregory's. Antarctica, the mysterious massive continent at our southern pole that nobody is allowed to explore. After sailing over 60,000 miles along the Antarctic coastline, Captain Cook was never able to complete the journey around the ice continent, which is supposed to be just under 12,000 miles around. Neither was James Clark Ross or the British ship Challenger. Nobody has ever successfully circumnavigated So this is where the idea Antarctica. gets tied to flat Earth, Many right? So like our understanding of geography is not right. Exactly. These attempts failed because Antarctica is actually a massive ice barrier that surrounds the flat surface of the Earth. The azimuthal equidescent projection so this would be kind of the idea. produced by the U.S. Geological Survey has been used for centuries for the fact that all directions or azimuths are correct and all distances are at true scale. Studying this map, one can clearly see how man has been able to accurately circumnavigate the Earth on a flat plane model. And if it is in fact accurate, then it explains why after 60,000 miles, nobody has been able to completely circumnavigate Antarctica. Interestingly, this is also the map used by the United Nations. Admiral That's Richard unsettling. Byrd, Medal of Honor winner, youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, and recipient okay, so of three ticker tape We heard about him already honor, a little bit. Led four now skip to that other one, it's 721. I'm not, I'm not persuaded by this. 68. Comment and below what you 1st, think. 1959, all 12 countries active in Antarctica signed a United Nations treaty that outlawed all public travel south of the 60th Southern Parallel. This was the same time that NASA was formed. The world's attention was pulled away from exploring Antarctica and directed firmly on the moon. In 1962, a series of high-altitude nuclear tests was carried out by the United States. It was called Operation Fishbowl, which has caught the curiosity of many Flat Earth researchers because the Flat Earth model shared by the ancients was one where we lived within a sphere, upon a flat surface, and surrounded by a massive dome, like a fishbowl, or the Truman Show. In 2012, 
the secret lost diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd was published, wherein Admiral Byrd allegedly claimed to enter a hollow earth through a hole in the center of Antarctica and meet with an advanced alien civilization. The diary provides no evidence of being authentic, and many would suggest that it portrays the distinguished admiral as a crackpot and strange tales of Antarctica as fantasy. Okay. To this day, the public is strictly... Um, send me your docu doc documentaries or whatever um, in the comments. I don't know. I guess you can send them to my email, uh, info at chadbarola.com. Listen, send them discreetly. We don't want you to, like, lose your job or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could you imagine getting, losing your job for, like, being curious about, like, the Earth's, like, the Earth's um, shape? Yeah, that, I mean, I feel like we're not too far from that. Like, if you question too many of, like, the orthodoxies, then you're kind of done. I know, I get you look like a, a kook. You know, when you say the Earth's flat, because obviously we're all raised to believe it's, it's round. Uh, and I genuinely believe it's round, okay? Don't worry. Well, some people are probably like, come on, dude. It's flat and you know it. That's what's so funny is like some very, very rational people seemingly are like, no, it's flat. And a surprising amount of the uh, NBA. Have you seen that? No. There's like a really high ratio of NBA players that are like legitimate flat earthers. Interesting. Any prominent people that you know, like names? I could, I could pull it up real quick if you give me a sec. Like LeBron? I'm just kidding. Don't sue me, LeBron. And then there was like these... Um... Okay, so at least Kyrie Irving and Shaq. Oh, interesting. Shaq? Yeah. I Is that real? I think, he's oh, made, I think I saw he's that made clip. Some, some uh, comments in the past. I think I saw that clip, yeah. That went around recently. Where, like, he kind of held the line. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely shady stuff going on down on the South Pole. Um, what do you make of, like, the biblical interpretation of, like, the, the firmament dome. and the... Yeah. You know, one thing I'm actually kind of curious about in regards to, like, the moon and, and space travel is there... You know, I've heard some of the arguments that you can't go past the... Um, there's a certain barrier i guess it would probably be equated to like the dome or something like that but that humans just cannot go past and so that's one of the reasons why they say the moon landing never happened it's be, i forget what it's called um it's not the firmament it's something along those lines um what do i think about it i you know i i don't i mean i where there is an atmosphere um I don't, this, in that video, I actually kind of described it as like the um, Truman Show where it's just like a wall or something. No, I mean, I think there's space. It all makes sense to me. You know, even, even talks about the difference in ideas of uh, whether it's a geocentric or the other centric. Either we revolve around the sun or everything revolves around the earth. I do think that, and then the more, um, not the geocentric, but the other, or the sun. Is it heliocentric? Heliocentric, that sounds right. And um, just based off of mass, it makes sense to me physics-wise um, that mass has a, has a uh, gravitational pull. The bigger mass of a planet, a, you know, a star, whatever it is, um, the more of a gravitational pull it will have, especially in a zero-gravity uh, space. Um, to me, that makes sense if the sun is the biggest you know, mass in the in the in our universe or rather in our galaxy or whatever that uh all this all the planets would revolve around the sun uh, based on that theory it makes sense to me open-minded but that's 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 where i'm at all right that's I'm, I'm i'm taking the uh traditional perspective here based in in my education would you do you side on the helio versus geo do you galileo I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know why it would matter to make that delineation. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm sure the model works the way that we've all been taught the model to work. My major issue is like the multiple times that NASA has just been flat out lying about the sorts of footage that they're recording. Um, and like obvious green screens in the background of their like interviews. And we'll stuff. do a moon landing one. We'll, yeah. We'll like, do one. I, I just tend to think that even if we have gone to the moon, that 
we are just using NASA to launder money all over the place, and they're not doing anything, yeah. anything oh, absolutely. Subst- you know, substantive with it. It's another governmental um, entity that just sucks the taxpayers' money. You know, once you give the government a certain amount of power, uh, money, whatever, they tend to not give it back. Uh, and then lastly on this topic, there was uh, something that was going around on, on the social medias. There's like a Rothschild Island in Antarctica and a Deception Island. Those are the titles of islands around Antarctica. That's funny, to say the least. That's bizarre. I also saw, un- kind of pseudo-related to this, I saw someone on TikTok posting maps and globes from like maybe the 20s and prior with mm. an extra island, like a massive island uh, just west of Australia that's no longer on our maps. Huh. So and are they so, just saying that... Uh, I don't know if there's a formal theory or if it's just kind of like there's something weird happening and there's geography that exists that we're not allowed to know about because they're doing something with it. Hmm. Or because there's a base on it or something for yeah, national security. Yeah, there's a base security. or something that the government's doing. Mm-hmm. Wild stuff. I'd love to hear more about Antarctica theories, but I do, I do seem, seem to be persuaded by, as, as strange as even that sounds, uh, that, that, that uh, Germany had some, some secret, some, some, some knowledge. It was interesting. I came across a documentary. I wanted to clip it, but it was too, it was too long. Couldn't really find a spot, but it, talking about like Black Sun and weird stuff. Because I wanted to know like, what, did, what, what, what was the esoteric stuff? What was the knowledge that was in that sphere? What did they think? What were they pursuing? And um, it seems pretty weird. And what's, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I don't really know, but it's having to do with, um, he talks about it, that whistleblower guy, talking about different, how atoms and different things, cr- creating different, um, uh, lesser known physics, things about our reality anti-gravity stuff it kind of talks about that te- technological stuff and it's all fascinating i mean i think ufos are real i think they're flying around i think it's just as whether or not and what are what are they who's behind it i think that's the real question but uh very very fascinating stuff hopefully we're still on and we haven't gotten pulled yet um i think that's that's that topic Tell us what you think about the conspiracy segment. If you want us to keep doing them, and if you have a, a topic you'd like us to delve into next episode or in the future. Moving right along, I wanted to talk about something that uh, a friend of mine actually asked me to talk about. Resilience. How do you find resilience? Um, being yourself, talking about issues you find important, came across a tweet today it was talking about um, people tend to get the most hate for their most virtuous qualities something along those lines but it made me feel a little encouraged like huh because you know I've, I've gotten in trouble in the past um how do you i in 2020 prior to 2020 i may have shared this on the podcast before but i uh i didn't have resilience in fact i was praying for resilience to be able to like withstand hate, to withstand a barrage of negative comments that it wouldn't deter me from telling the truth, being me, being honest. And I think we all feel it, right? I mean, we're all aware of it. Cancel cultures run rampant over the last few years, though it's dying out. And I think people are becoming more and more sick of it, but I'd prayed for in 2020 resilience. And uh, as the Lord does, he gave me an opportunity to show resilience. And at the time, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't super there. Um, and my answer is this. I think it's rooted in this for me in my mindset. It's not that I'm like always resilient or I don't have any, you know, weakness moments. But I think it's because when I first became a Christian... I've always had this like weird, <laughs> not morbid, but like this fascination with martyrdom, with dying for 
Christ. Since I was in Bible study, since I was like 17 years old, the question always came up, would you be willing to? Would you be able to, would you be a Peter and deny Christ three times? Or would you be faithful? And all of us, you know, in our arrogance, I think, say, oh yeah, I would never deny Jesus. I'm a Christian, you know, I'm sold out. Well, we experienced some tests in the last few uh, years. Were you faithful? We all were tested. No doubt all of us were tested one way or the other. And you know, some of you came to Christ through the last few years. And others were forced to kind of suffer, maybe, through mandates, through cultural pressure movements, peer pressure, to succumb to the current thing. But for me, it was always this like, are you willing to do it? Here I am, Lord, use me. And that's my heart's desire. And I think ultimately that's why I was praying it. Resilience, I want to be prepared. You hear these stories about martyrs in the Fox's Book of Martyrs when I was an early Christian. I used to read about the early um, Christians and, and, how, and what they were willing to go through um, on behalf of Christ. In fact, that was one of the biggest testimonies for Christianity to the world was why would these people, all 12 disciples, be immensely persecuted to the point of 11 of the 12, well, actually 12 of the 13, because Stephen was stoned and he was the original, they replaced him. But um, with the exception uh, exception of John, who was severely persecuted, all of them attest to seeing Christ, the resurrected Christ, And they went to the grave with that conviction. And because of that, they turned the world upside down. But you hear these stories in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, and um, some of them were just like overcome with joy, singing songs, spiritual songs and hymns, all the way up to the last moments. You hear miraculous stories. There was one that always stuck with me, and I always forget who it was, but it's in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. And it's, it's a guy who was accused of, Christ, I don't know what it was exactly, but he was brought before the judge and, a, and his accuser, and he wouldn't recant. And I believe every Christian kind of gets put in these positions throughout their lives in different ways too, and maybe not explicitly, but in different ways. Compromise, compromise. Eat this food, sacrifice to idols. Come on, it's not so bad. Like it, there, there are little moments as well, but there's sometimes they're very explicit. But this happened with this guy and he wouldn't recant. He said, no. And he even like, I want to say he even like prayed for the, his accuser and, and, and express love to the guy that was accusing him, telling him to, uh, you know, trying to get him to go to get the death penalty, essentially. And he didn't respond in kind, he responded in love. And what's awesome is as he was getting put to death, I want to say it was beheading, he did so willingly, he never recanted, and his accuser got up and, and got executed with him because he, he thought that because his faith is so strong that he wouldn't recant, what benefit could he have in this world? There wasn't. That's the beautiful thing about Christianity, in my opinion, that drives us to be, have the ultimate potential of fearlessness. In, in um, Joshua 1.9, be strong and of great courage. This idea of like, we have the ability if you cannot fear death because Jesus defeated death. We too in Christ have defeated death. And if Christ be for us, who can be against us? There's power there. And I want to know that. I want, to, I, want to cons- I want that to fully consume me. I, I remember one time I was on my way home and I was just kind of thinking, praying, prinking, prayerfully thinking. 
And, uh, and I was thinking, you know, it, in, in, in a sense, like I've always had this like, Lord, <laughs> I'll go terrified of dying, you know, a persecution on one end. But on the other hand, I'm like, Lord, take that from me. And I'm not wishing for it, not wishing for martyrdom. There's this principle in Christianity, right, where it's like, he who loves his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake shall gain it. There's like an upside-down principle. Um, like, unless you hate your life. You know, it's like this, this real dramatic thing. And so I, I, I've always wanted to, like, kind of tune myself in my, in my real, you know, conscientious, conscientious moments to being a willing bond servant to Jesus Christ to do everything. There's what Paul says. He says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In fact, that was the, I have this tattoo, the only tattoo I have, it says, you live, I die. But that's, that's what that, that means to me, was that, um, that I decrease and he would increase in me. This idea all the way up to the ultimate cost. There's this idea, and I, I forget which one it is. It's one of the final letters. Um, one of the letters, the epistles, is talking about enduring to the very end, and that if you do, you know, you will be given the crown of life and the honor bestowed. One of the guys that um, really framed my mindset when I was an early Christian was this guy, Leonard Ravenhill, radical preacher, awesome guy. Should come up with a clip. Actually, why don't you look up on YouTube uh, the Judgment Seat of Christ? Heavy metal guy strips of all you know. He strips the uh, gospel down to its core, and uh, I know I would listen to that and listen to it and listen to it. What's the name? It's called the Judgment Seat of Christ. It's like a. It's probably like a montage by, who? Even, by Leonard Ravenhill. Got it. It might even be like a 10 minute video. We'll just listen to a clip of it. I just want you to hear hear the uh the tone and the conviction. But it's this idea of like being sold out. And that's that's what I want to be. You like to drink, go with the drinkers. You like to lust, go with the prostitutes. In hell, if you're given to lust after women, you'll have that lust, but there's nothing to satisfy your lust. If you drink, you'll thirst, but there'll be nothing to satisfy you. You'll give a king's ransom for one drop of water. There isn't even a drop of water, never mind that precious wine you drink. When in God's name is the church going to open uh, her heart again and open her mind again and see again that every man, I cannot, whether he flies his own private Learjet or how many millions he has or rules over a city, the great of the earth and the scum of the earth and the, the unbelievers are going to spend their time etern in, in eternity. They're going to live there forever and ever. The good book says where their worm dieth not. It's courts. It will be <laughs> awesome when we see the founders of these cults stand before God. Watch, pause. So this is this, it's kind of his, his style of preaching. It's really intense, but it's very, very sound, very... Dead serious stuff, and it's dead serious matters. I mean, what more serious things are there to talk about? But he talks about how he was um, mentored by A.W. Tozer. I believe that's who it was. And uh, an old author, American author, prolific. But uh, he's, he tells a story about how A.W. Tozer would talk to him and say, Hey, Len, you know, what I'm concerned about is that when we get to heaven will show up and will we'll marvel at, at the opportunities we had in Christ on this earth. And we show up as paupers, as poor, poor people. It's that idea of build your, uh, stash up your treasures in heaven through your good deeds in secret, through your sacrifice for Christ on earth, that there's like this hierarchy in heaven for those who suffered and, and did the most for Christ are the richest in the kingdom of heaven. So all of that, that is my thinking. And so when I'm in this car, you know, I'm driving home and I'm thinking, Lord, don't hold anything back from me. It's a terrifying prayer. 
And it makes me emotional because you have a lot, you know, I got a lot to live for. And he knows that. You know, what's cool is uh, what's, you know, very hard to understand is that Jesus calls some of the disciples and they have families. You know, they've got uh, kids probably. And he's like, come with me. It's the most important thing you'll ever do. It's heavy metal. You willing to die for Christ? And that's what he asks them. The cost of being his disciple. He who sets his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for work in the kingdom. That's right. So I hope, I hope there's a bunch of people out there that are thinking about some of these things, you know. They say the... Uh, Say it in a patriotic sense, but um, the tree of liberty is watered by the blood of patriots, something along those lines. Well, the expansion of the kingdom seems to uh, have a similar principle. It seems like in times of persecution is when the church spreads the most, you know? You hear about that in, in I, uh, is it Iran? In China? You know, my wife's dad was a missionary in China. He put his life on the line to smuggle Bibles into China. And it's funny as um, I was talking to Bree. She made this interesting parallel. We were talking about, um, you know, Albuquerque is a, it's, it's a beautiful place with rich culture, tons of great people. It's also really dark. New Mexico is a pretty dark place as well. Great history. Great Christian history, by the way. Santa Fe. I mean, the churches here. Awesome. Beautiful. You ever get a time to visit? Check out the churches. The historic churches. But she was talking to me, and I was like, I feel like we're missionaries in our hometown, in a way. Which is really weird, you know? Well, Christians are sojourners. This isn't our home, right? But she, she had this thought. She said, uh, that's so funny. She said, I never wanted to marry a missionary because my dad was a missionary. Something along those lines. And here she is, married to a little missionary, you know, in Albuquerque, Mexico. Kind of. Resilience. You've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Remember that. Cancel culture. There's that idea of just going head on into it. It's like, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm stoked. Let it happen. Because that's where the, um, that's where the fruit comes, you know? Anyway, that's my rant I'm not sure we have any listener questions, do we? Not this week. No. Let's jump into the final video. And the world is going crazy. Just remember, guys, stay tuned and don't succumb to peer pressure. Kid, would you like some drugs? The first one is free. There it is. Want to check out my van? I got some candy. <laughs> Hey, kid, you want to join our gang and spray paint under a bridge? No, no, I'm going roller skating. Yeah. How's that for a tone change? I want to be addicted to roller skating, not crack. I'm going to roller skating today. <laughs> not so crack. Go to college tomorrow. Prison is full of people that have never roller skated. I'm Brad <laughs> Oh, their reaction so good. In Reno, Nevada, <laughs> keeping your kids off the streets since 1999. I say no to drugs. I say no to gangs. I say no to unplanned pregnancy. I say no to meth. <laughs> I say no to reefer. I say Is yes this real? I can't imagine. Man, this part of kingdom is going to be Tim and Eric. out of business. You said it, man. This deal sucks. But you know what? Maybe we should give up this life of crime and start... Roller skating! All right, guys. 
when in doubt, don't do drugs, especially meth and crack, uh, which we're known for here in New Mexico. Um, roller skate. When you're tempted, get your skates on. Go skating. Go to Roller King. They have Christian night, funny enough. I'm not even kidding. Um, all right, that's the show. Thank you for listening. You guys are awesome. Give the show a like. Subscribe to the channel. Push us in the algorithm. The likes really do help. Um, and share it with a friend if you like the show uh, and it means something to you. Share it to a friend. That's about it. Love you. Bye.